Do you ever feel like the content you create and your business is sort of getting lost in AI? Like with this podcast, The AI Optimist, it's ranking pretty well on Google, but when I search for it on platforms like Perplexity, it's nowhere to be found. It was like my content vanishes into this like digital black box that nobody can explain to me. I mean, yet you do the things we're taught, optimize for search engines, get some people to link to you and nail your keywords, and your content still feels like it's a ghost in this AI machine. Well, this is the world of what's now called Generative Engine Optimization, GEO. It's a new mysterious zero clicks world. I mean, when people look for you on ChatGPT, they don't click. Hopefully the answer is there. And if there's more, they will click, but it's where traditional search rules no longer apply, even though honestly, some of them do. So I'm gonna crack open the black box and show you how to get found in this AI driven world, both for my AI Optimist podcast and also a historical site that I have and looking up my own personal brand so you can learn how to do this for yourself. And later on, I'm gonna share with you the three little steps that'll mean so much difference to take your giant GEO leap. Because while it's the early days of the AI search shakeup, the time is now. Let's create your GEO victory blueprint and let's start with the foundation. What is GEO and how does it differ from SEO, what we do on search? This foundational question for anyone stepping into this new world. We all use ChatGPT, but now we have to know how to be found on perplexity, you.com, Google and Bing, which have their own AI. We'll break down the core concepts, explain how it goes in different ways from search, and then look at the key differences between the two. Now we've all searched and when you do, you get results, hundreds and thousands of them ranked with specific keywords, with specific links to them, all this stuff that honestly Google doesn't tell us, but we've sort of figured it out. And there's simple steps you can take that I'm going to share. And that will help you greatly, whether you're doing search or GEO, because really these worlds, as different as they are in what you get, they're not much different than what we actually do. See, in GEO, it's not a search engine. It's an answer engine. And it's a black box, meaning while we don't know how it arrives at the answer, what you get are about three to five sources, often in perplexity cited and linked. And in ChatGPT, it's not, but you can ask it, hey, where did you get these? So it's really like what's called an authority check. Who, why should we know, like, and trust you? And this all began with this report that came out in April, Generative Engine Optimization. Now that's a big fancy word, but what these people did is they went out and they searched and they took the top five results at Google, and then they went into perplexity and saw how they could place them. And not only did they come up with a framework I'm sharing with you here, they gave us specific metrics to look at so that you know how you're getting found and position yourself so you find what they consider the authority. Because this is really an evolution of what began in search with questions. Remember, all of a sudden these things called rich snippets appeared at the top? So it's basically answering your questions. Well, this is the next level, but they don't actually always click from those results unless there's more information they need. So while this study was really good, what was interesting is as you take a look at it, it's a very deep document. I've summarized it on my Substack. By the way, if you want any of the sources, anything I'm sharing here, go to my Substack, go to my YouTube. I've got links to everything. You can dive much deeper. We're going to try to keep it pretty light here because basically it's just a little bit different than search. And as you ever use chat GPT, you know, you're getting the answer. You don't really need to go to the site, but as a person or a business, you need to be found. Now, what was interesting is the evaluation methods that came out of this. That's really what makes it different because how you get found is really as an authority. Do they trust your site and what goes into that? I'll get into that in a little bit, but the real metrics was really important. How do you actually measure whether you're getting found in GEO or not? And what they came up with was what's called PAWC, position adjusted word count. Long phrase for, have you ever noticed on the responses you get on ChatGPT, you'll see a lot of different phrases or on any of these. 
how many words are related to the main source that they cite because what they do is they prioritize them in terms of authority. You start seeing this top one like perplexity puts a one or a two in there and some answers you see really one source dominate and all their words from their site are used. That's what makes the word measurement there. How many of those words come from the source? And for you as a business or a person for personal branding, how many come from you? And the second one is subjective impression, which brings into like relevance of how the question is and what your answer is, the answer of the authority, um, citations that will list that, uniqueness of the material, where it's positioned, just like search, if it's lower down, it's not as a high priority. It's not that somebody won't get them because there's usually only three to five, but they're prioritized in a different way. So on this site from SEO.ai that shows us some of the positioning, these were taken from the study. So they had a question, what is the secret of Swiss chocolate? And they found things that boosted this by 40%. I'll share them with you in a little bit. What is the secret of Swiss chocolate? According to a survey, they cited a source. That's really important. There are sources outside that they trust that are considered authorities. A lot of them are really big. I've got a whole list of them in a little bit. What's important to remember is you always want to get validation from something else. So if you have a blog post, they had a link to this research group who did that search. They sometimes answered a question like, should robots replace humans in the workforce? And they put in a statistic, a staggering 70% increase. If you're watching, you can see it on the screen. That boosted it up 65%. The Swiss chocolate was boosted by 132% with a source and authoritative, meaning especially like in history or business, you know what you're saying. The language is really strong. Did the Jacksonville Jaguars ever make it to the Super Bowl? It is important to note the Jaguars have never appeared to make an appearance. Now that seems really obvious, but what it is is really strong language that boosted it up in the generative engines, like perplexity in this case, by 89%. That is actually doable. Finding a source, putting some statistics in where applicable, making it authoritative. And I'm going to share with you the three little steps you can take, but take that away. And now I want you to think about your brand, your name. We talk a lot about personal branding. Well, I went out to test whether my name, Declan Dunn, if any of these generative engines knew who I was. So I searched Gemini and Bing, and they both gave me three answers, but they listed three people with the name of Declan Dunn. There's a very famous UK football player. There is a character in a TV show from many years ago, and there's me, a partnership and marketing expert that's been around for many years since the early.com. So when you click that, they gave me really detailed answers, but that's associated with search, which is nice if you're in Bing or Google and using their AI, but I went to perplexity and it also recognized who I was. And what was key is the authoritative source for me was LinkedIn. I've got a good LinkedIn profile, but it went really deep. It knew a lot of questions about me, a lot of answers. Because I've been doing this a while, I have authority, especially for my name, which is unusual. But that information I took and it was really amazing. It's like, wow, this is how they are presenting me to people. This is how ChatGPT, Bing, Google, all of them had very similar answers. Some of them with details I was amazed at that are very, very, I've been around a while. Some of this was pulling out information that was great and I actually used it to update my LinkedIn profile. So the difference between GEO and SEO, it's very focused on you and here's your exercise. Go to ChatGPT, perplexity, you.com, ask them the questions about you, who, who are you? Or if you need to add a little bit more detail, if your name is sort of, comparable to many others, add a few words along with that. That's where the keywords play in. See what they say about you. See if they say anything about you or your brand or your business. Are you in there yet? And what you want to do is if you're not, look at the sources that are up there, keep them because we're going to link to them. We're going to quote them. We're going to take statistics from them that will help enhance any of the content we're doing and get us found much more than before. Now, once you have a solid foundation, we understand what GEO is different. It gives answers and we need to be in the top three to five citations. The next part of your blueprint is like building the structure. Like you build a foundation first and then you build the walls and the roof. 
these are your walls and roof on, on all these engines and to have your content shown on your websites as well as what you share on social media. So now that we know the GEO basics, it's time for number two, GEO success unlocked, the essential do's and don'ts. Now the do's are standard search engine do's, very simple that I've applied for years and that even experts have told me if people would just do these basics, they do better. You need a unique focus keyword set. You need on-page SEO, and I'll show you what that means in a second. You need links to other sites as well as back to you, and it needs to be easy to read. So on this site that I'm showing you is one that I actually tested to get onto the GEO search engines. So what it has is a very simple word. Now this is a historical document, so it needs an authoritative tone from the GEO report. And the keyword is Holocaust poetry. Don't worry about the subject. This is very positive. So I mentioned it in the headline. I mentioned it in the first sentence, which some people will get close to keyword stuffing. We don't want to do that. But what I also did was quote the site that is an expert, but that has some of these poems, but is not considered in this topic. It's all the major museums and large organizations that teach this. So after looking on perplexity, I couldn't find myself. I added the authority sites it had and link to them with a quote here. One was the U.S. Holocaust Museum on Poetry, and another was called Facing History in Ourselves. And then I went into my own story, and the thing you'll notice is it's very simple, and the keyword is not repeated throughout, throughout, but I play on that word, and I play on the poetry, and let it know what's going on, and I use a lot of short sentences, short paragraphs, and also use what's called on-page SEO only for that page by the way one keyword set of two to four words per page don't duplicate them and then what you do is you put subheaders and headers and you put words that are related to it. you don't keep repeating it or keyword stuffing it and you scroll down you'll see that there's lots of space and that I'm actually using these words like Holocaust ghetto which was where one of the poems came from and what that does is allow Google and perplexity both to be able to understand that this site is positioned and because a lot of them use the search engines even the study used google a lot of those methods still work so you don't have to redo things now the next step is to include links remember when we found the authority sites in geo and i linked to them from my page well this is a real seo expert at seo seoptimer.com and it's about generative engine optimization, a great article you should read in detail, but let's go through it because really smart search people, Ruben Rogers in this case, has very short sentences, very easy to read language, and then a quote with a link. He also links very first to perplexity, which obviously perplexity is a authority for its own search. So he's playing into that, not as a game, but as a really common sense logic. And as I scroll down, he also includes links within his own site as you see here, and to OpenAI. You always link in your own site so that when one of these search bots or GEO bots comes to your site, it's then directed to other related pages. That's how you get more and more content and you're recognized as an authority in a very simple level. And as I scroll down, the really beautiful part about this, lots of pictures, big headlines, is GEO replacing traditional SEO? And another quote and a link, to Mert Urkow, an SEO strategist, and to LinkedIn, a high authority source. So by using links that are placed throughout the page and quotes by others, this adds authority to the page. This is why this site will be found done by a very smart search expert. So remember the power of using links within your page and get them from ChatGPT, from Perplexity, whatever they list at the top, get quotes, link to them as authorities that adds to the positioning of your page. Now, the final factor that's in this is to make it readable. And I have an article called LinkedIn Lowdown, how to create posts that people actually care about. Readability, simple language. Kate Irwin does a great job here. Ah, LinkedIn, the social platform that launched a thousand B2B content creators. Plenty of founders and marketers understand the importance of LinkedIn as part of their marketing mix, but putting it into practice is a different question altogether. Steal these hacks to game the algorithm and ah, uh, gotcha. 
Now, what she's doing is being very personable, but as you, if you're able to see these sentences, there's lots of space, two to three sentences per paragraph, short, simple phrases. This is so important to the generative engines like perplexity. This is what they want and what the study cited. Make it simple, keep it down. Now, if you're in a very complex topic in that domain, sure. In fact, I'm gonna show you one later that you can get a little deeper. But as we scroll in, it's very easy to read, lots of pictures, lots of subheadlines. Every 300 words, break it up. Don't just have piles of text. Break it up with headlines, big words, small words, every 300 words, and you'll be ahead of the game and you'll be found on search and you'll also have much more likelihood to be found in a generative engine. Now, before we get to the three steps, little steps you need to take, these are the don'ts that you don't want to do and we sort of cover them. We don't want to keyword stuff. You don't just keep copy and pasting and putting it in there. That was done years ago. In fact, the GEO study was a little dated because they sort of thought keyword stuffing was done and no one's done it for years. It simply doesn't work and you don't need to do it. The AI is really smart. Don't ignore citations and quoting sources. Remember that SEO Optimer site? All those search experts are quoted and linked to because that adds authority and you need to link to sites outside your blog. And hopefully they might get a return link if you're friendly, that helps you, but it's not required here. And in GEO, they want to see that you're linking to authority sites. So remember, if you don't know them like the search people do, who might all know each other, then you want to go to Perplexity, to Google, to Bing, go to their AI, find the sites they list, link to them, take quotes out of them, and basically you're adding authority. And again, remember like the LinkedIn article, the third don't, don't make it hard to read. Don't make long paragraphs. Don't put really thick words. Write at a fifth to seventh grade level and make it easy to read. And every 300 words a subheader, break it up. One to two paragraphs, uh, one to two sentences per paragraph, and don't duplicate content and be careful of using AI because you might sound like everybody and don't forget to update. That's the end of part one of AI Search Shakeup, your GEO Victory Blueprint. And I realized when I was recording this, I'm gonna divide this into two parts and we'll give you the three easy steps in your action plan to do GEO in an upcoming episode. So stay tuned, thank you for listening, and don't give up yet. Generative engines are where we're going for answers. Search is where we go for search. And the world that's evolving is opening an opportunity to you right now. Take advantage while you can.